guys, check out the next level games for all your TCG needs. Link is down below in the description of the video. Thanks, guys. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. Today, we are covering the Denver Regionals from this past weekend. Uh, if you want quicker notifications for these, go follow the Team Fish Knuckles page down below. I think we're almost close to like 2,000 likes, if I remember correctly. Uh, but we have all top eight decks from the Regionals. We actually had them finished on Monday, and today is Wednesday we posted the video. Uh, so like I said, if you want these like pretty quickly, go follow the Facebook page. I'm always trying to like get these as quickly as possible, and um, I know there's other websites like Limitless and stuff like that always doing it, but nobody really does it for Facebook, so I think that's a pretty cool thing here. And also, we still have like all the other um, albums. I mean, if you go to the other albums, you can see all the other top eight decks. I know I've covered but Greensboro, um, there's Toronto, Collinsville since we started it, and they should all have their photos, uh, if I remember correctly. So, if you want top eight lists, you can always follow the Team Fish Knuckles page. We'll constantly keep posting North American results. I know we could go deeper, but we're going the North American route um, only. <laughs> maybe internet, and maybe internets. Maybe. We'll see. Anyways, let's go to top eight decks. Let's just go from the start. Uh, we're actually looking at Caleb's uh, from Dead Draw Gaming, his first play list. Um, now, when I post these, I try to tag whoever is um, the person who played it. But um, just to see if like, people have questions, maybe they'll reach out. Maybe they'll answer. If, I'm not making any promises. But um, it's just a Zorak control deck, right? We just see a 4-4 four, four Zorak, 2-2 two, two, two Muck with a Ditto. So they have three outs to get the Muck, a Jirafric, Oranguru, two Orangurus as well, and two Tapu Leles. One of the more interesting decks that we see is a Champions Festival. Lavender Town has becoming more and more a staple in these control decks. Uh, body building dumbbells is another big thing for this deck. It makes sure Mucks have way more HP, uh, which is the big thing here. Uh, we see a bunch of Crush Hammers, Enhanced Hammers, of course, Oranguru to get back that stuff. Um... I'm surprised that there's no countercatcher in this list because usually you do see countercatcher to try to punish your opponent, uh, but no countercatcher in this list. But it's just a very straightforward, like, hey, I'm just going to try to mill you out kind of thing, right? We're going to get rid of your resources and then we'll start attacking, right? Okay, I don't care. Let's snooze. Don't care about my restart. Sorry, guys. Um, it's just a basic, like, hey, we're going to wait you out of resources <clears throat> and then we'll start taking knockouts. So that, and that's the game plan, right? Um, and it's funny, Mac has had a Zora control and not lose to turn one full blitz. Um, I have n no idea. I, I don't know. I don't know how it doesn't. Um, maybe, like, if they can punish him by get rid of the energies and they can't ever attack. Like, if you can flip multiple hammers and make it where they can't do it and they get out the top of Coco very quickly, then they're definitely in trouble. So I think that's the struggle with Pikaram is you're able to... Like I said, get rid of their one energy uh, pretty quickly with Crush Namers and stuff like that. And then you can use Top of Coco Prism. Uh, you can get rid of the Top of Coco Prism by the um, Alola Muck. They have to use it by turn two because you have three outs to get this Muck out. So he's, he's coming out, right? With four Ultra Ball, three Communication, and four Nest Ball. There's a billion different ways to get this out. So very aggressive. It's not really aggressive. It's just a very like consistent Zorak deck. There's, you know... I mean, congrats to Caleb. All Dead Draws gave me their killing in the season, obviously. Uh, so let's go to second place. The so second place is actually Reggie Gigastall, which is very interesting because, you know, you would think um, that it would have a good matchup. Um, now, I know that uh, Hill, I think his name is Hill. I don't, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. I know he won because of Unknown. I haven't seen the game. I know he won game two by Unknown. Um, and then I watched, I watched game two to, like, the end, and in game three, he just, like, do, dr dr dead drew, had a hoopa in the active, and, uh, Caleb eventually hit the switch. So the list did play a one of switch, um, which helped Caleb win the game. If Caleb didn't play the one of switch, he would have lost to, to Regigigas, because, um, what happened in the finals is, I think his name is Hell, like I said, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, he basically had one hoopa in, if he ever attached a DC anywhere where it's, it was going to get, um, you know, uh, detached with Faba, um, cause he had a bunch of Fabas in hand and stuff like that. So, and then Plumeria. So he was able to get rid of his DCs pretty instantly. Um, so I'm not sure how exactly he won game two or how Caleb won game one. I haven't watched those. It's probably on Twitch, uh, somewhere. I forget. I think it was LGN streams who hosted it this weekend. Don't quote me on that. They're definitely having it on their YouTube channel. Um, but just a straight like Regigigas Hoopa deck. Trying to use unknown, you can use unknown to kind of win the games. Obviously, with four Stevens resolve, you kind of just draw in the cards. 
Uh, we've played this deck before. Kind of catch to punish opponent for taking prize cards. Uh, Luki is in there to punish opponent. Um, Larvitar, I think, makes it where they need one more energy. Uh, don't quote me on that 100%. There's a Magikarp from Wailer GX just to have a billion HP. And two Shuck, of course, to help shut down against the Zark decks. It seems like it'd be a good matchup, but with the two Oren Gurus, you're able to kind of deck out your opponent as well. And with the Lola Muck, you're easily going to win these games. Um, so yeah, still congratulations, second place, making it stall. So, two, like, you know, Zora Control and, and Regigigas stall. This is great. This is some fun to interactive decks uh, where people get for a second place. So, in third place, we have Javier Gonzalez. I guess is how you say his name, playing Celosaur. I am so, look, we even have Bulbasaur here to cheer me on, and then we got Celebes always around me, so I was definitely rooting for him. Um, there's a, a couple of interesting things in this list, right? Um, we see there's no crushing hammers, right? We know there's no crushing hammers. Um, we see the mixed herbs, which is something I don't think we've really seen in these decks before. Uh, three shaman, of course. I think the most he ever played on is two, um, because it makes him uh, knock out two Celebi Venusaur GXs, which is really cool. Um, we see a Life Force, the Ether Paradise, nothing too crazy there. The four Judge Whistle is definitely a staple we see in these decks. We now see Bill Analysis in this list as well to help you draw cards. Uh, Venture Back is really cool to help find these key cards, like the One Escape or Choice Band or the Choice Hammer. Now, Actually, if you, um, it looks like Javier is actually responding to, to comments, which is really cool because if you see, um, Ian said, how does this deck or any Celestia deck survive against Fire deck? <clears throat> Where Were there any matches like that? I would love to see it played out. And he actually, Javier responded, um, Big Brain played versus Blasef, you want to skip a big uh, Beast Ring turn, all right? Yo, sick profile pick. Well, yo, I don't understand what you just said. Congrats to third. Uh, Paul and Hazard, but I got KO'd between turns, going into my turn due to poison and burn. Then I Guzma KO'd another one to make two prizes, making me making him escape B string. Uh, nice dude, I gotta ask, did you go first that game? And I'm, I'm assuming no one ran a charge deck of the tournament due to his limitations versus other decks, but how would you combat that? I'm the only asking because I love Celestor as well, but I always lose the fire decks. I do need to run more Guzmas probably. Um, First game I did, second game I obviously didn't. Se second game was a bit harder since he did have kill a, a Venusaur very quickly, but he did have to discard four energy, which was all of in the moment. It gave it gave me time to implement my strategy. There were charge decks in Denver, but he did not hit. It. None of them did well. If you if your area has a lot of fire, you can try to carry weakness policy or two. Correct correction. I went second both times. How do you think this deck will fare against Unbroken Bonds? Uh, so he may respond. Who knows? That's the big question. How will he respond to Broken, bo broken Bonds going forward? Uh, he might have an answer. It's a lot of theory mod, of course, but still very cool to see how he beat Baslafion. Be able to uh, Paul the Hazard, get knocked out back into your turn, do the math correctly is very key, which is very nice. Uh, so yeah. We see Javier responding. We see Celosaur. I'm happy. Uh, so we have three decks so far that are totally different. And uh, we kind of did that wrong. Hold on. One, two, three. There we go. Live editing. Uh, fourth place was Nick Stewart with Pika Box. Right? Um, I think it's really close to the... Um, Gonzalo? Um, I can't remember... Gustavo, yeah, Gustavo. I think it's Gustavo's list. I don't know why I said Gustavo. Gustavo's list, I'm pretty sure, that we featured on the channel. I'm um, just a straight up, like, toolboxy Pikachu deck. I think we covered the, the Thursday before this tournament. We see just a bunch of, like, everything, right? And it seems crazy, but it's got, like, different answers. You got the Pikachu Zekrom, the Zapdos, take your, your knockouts pretty quickly. Jirachi helps set up. Jolteon, if you needed Snipe or do the Immunity, is pretty cool. Um, Zero War for Retreat, Type of Coco for that cool, amazing GX out of nowhere. Type of Coco Prisma, get the energies, Absol to help re against Retreat. We see Tapu Lele and Marsh Shadow. There is a bunch of different one ups in this deck. And the interesting thing about this is there's no. Oh, there's one stretcher. Never mind. There's stretcher here. We're good. I was like, there's no stretcher, but there's one right there. Um, the big kind of thing of the weekend was how many Volkners do you play? That was a pretty cool debate to see all throughout the weekend. Um, we see just three switching cards, it seems, but two uh, energy switch, skateboards, um, ace roll is really cool. So yeah, congratulations to Nick Stewart for that Pika Box. I guess, yeah, definitely it's called Pika Box, right? So fifth place is where things get kind of interesting. Is this little Pika Box? I have no idea. We now see super... Somebody call it Pika Pads. This is Turbo Ram, not Box. Um, we see a Pikachu Zacom deck with Zeraor and Rayquaza, Tapu Coco, Coco, and, and Zapdos. So, someone Zapdos, 
Very nice to help you take your quick knockouts if need be. Uh, we see Order Pad, and Order Pad is going to help you, I guess, find whatever you want to, right? Um, maybe the Mysterious Energy, the Energy Switch, or uh, Multi Switch, the Energy Switches. You know, Mahone said, you know, I don't have enough Energy Switches. Let me play more. Um, so we see a Pikachu Zekrom, but a very, very, very fast uh, Pikachu Zekrom. This is actually from Andrew Mahone for Full Grip Games or Mahone Tricky Gem. Um, we also didn't give a shout out to Pro Play Games from, uh, I guess, Hale, like I said. Anyways, uh, with this list, we see the one of Rayquaza, which seems kind of interesting, right? What does it do? Well, it helps you get the energy out of nowhere. Obviously, you're not attacking with this Rayquaza, right? You're not. It needs a grass energy, so you're not attacking. But what you can do is use this ability to get energy out of nowhere. You're just like, all right, I'm just going to get an extra energy, energy switch, and that's how you can basically attack. I turn to pretty easily, right? You do have Thunder Mountain, which is definitely a way to get it out there if you need to use that. Um, but it also lets you attach, attack turn one because now you get energy, Thunder Mountain, and Rayquaza energy switch then take an, and start swinging that way. It's a very, very fast deck, right? You got the, like I said, the order pass to help flip some cards, get whatever you need to help achieve that turn one thing, right? To get the, um, the energy in the discard pile. I mean, you got Freddy Force. So, very... A different take on the Pikachu Zekrom deck. Um, fourth in place, fifth place. They're kind of the same deck, but they're definitely totally different in their own rights, right? Um, but still, congratulations on Andrew Mahomes. I'm glad he's killing. I'm glad he's back on the tra on track. Uh, so sixth place, we actually see a Zorak Lycanroc deck now. This is definitely one of the decks I was like highly considering uh, if I was going. Uh, it's just very good. You got you know the the, um, the Drachi Zapdos, right? An angel we've seen all throughout. Since this set's been legal, but now we know there's two on Lycanroc in his list. It's a Buzzle. Um, we see, you know, three fighting. We see, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, lightning. Um, just a switch, escape row, very heavy, Guzma base deck. Coco's in there for the GX tech, always great out of nowhere. Um, it's interesting that he plays a 2 1. Maybe the Lycanroc is just in there for solely for, um, z z um, for Zork. Be able to get the um, the Lycanroc down ASAP, and uh, or not ASAP, but to help against the Zork is very crucial because I don't think you can beat Zork without the Lycanroc. Don't quote me on that, but I feel like that's definitely the case with this. Um, so that's why we see Lycanroc be included in these decks. Um, but also Bloodthirsty Eyes in the GX deck is not bad at all either. Uh, congratulations, Adler. Um, I think him and Kevin Baxter are in the same 60, and they played against each other in round 8. Um, Adler would win, and unfortunately Kevin would lose. No, k -Bex. Uh But still, congratulations, Adler. I'm, I'm glad uh, you made top eight. And uh, once again, we haven't really seen a repeated deck so far. Uh, so seventh place, and now this is like Zapdos Drachi with Jolteon. So we see a 2-2 Jolteon instead, um, instead of the, you know, just straight up... Um, <clears throat> um, straight Jirachi Zapdos. But even then, we haven't seen that either. But this one played a Mr. Mime and a Wobbuffet. We're getting some, we're getting tacky here. Wobbuffet to shut down um, other Prism Pokemon so they can't use the top of Coco. So Mr. Mime in there to pick, so they can't pick up their damage Pokemon, which is really cool. Um, so a very interesting, uh, it's not really interesting. It's just a straightforward, like, Jirachi Zapdos. So we're going super fast. We we're once again playing a bunch of switching cards like the Guzmas and the skateboards. And Adventure Bag, that's something we haven't really seen. So that's something different in there. We still got the Coco. The one is Shrine of Punishment is very interesting as well. Since there's only one. Um, so, I don't know. Still a very cool take. Congratulations to Zach Kreckler. Um, I tried to give a shout out to Poco Beach when I tagged it and like did this weird thing. So that's what happens. And the Yeti Game, of course, right? We had to give a shout out to Yeti Game from Zach Kreckler. And then in eighth place. This is probably like where we only see kind of the same stall deck, right? We see Liam uh, playing another Red Giga Hoopa. So it got second and eighth place. Um, playing with three Enhanced Hammer, four Crush Hammer, four Max Potion. There's a new artwork Max Potion. Oh my goodness, that looks so cool. Um, <clears throat> so there's like two different versions. Like this one's definitely like, oh, well, there two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I don't know. It kind of seems the same, right? It's just, it's just how you pick your techie cards, right? Um, we see two weakness policies, which is very interesting. Um, I guess it helps your um, Red Giga survive longer. Um, I guess fighting, I guess. I'm not exactly sure what he's going for, but I don't think the other list played Articuno. No, it did not. Um, the, this list doesn't play Lugia like the other one. So there's some, some differences. So even though we're the same stall deck, 
Um, it's not a Reggie Giga stall. Like this one's definitely like we're going Reggie Giga stall, right? We're we're going full. We're going heavy ancient crystal. We're going Reggie Gigas. While this one's just like a stall, kind of. You know, I'm just gonna mill you out, use a ringer to get back my resources. I mean, Mars, Faba, your energy's away. We got some Acerola, we got some Skull Grunts, right? So we're actually trying to, like, get rid of their energies, like, super actively. Four Crushing, three Enhanced. Let's see what this list was. Um, yeah, see, this list didn't play any energy disruption besides Plumeria. So it's a very interesting take on two different kind of, like, stall decks, right? So I, I think it's really cool that this top eight really didn't have any like copy decks right and i guess that's you know we have what <clears throat> four lightning decks all back to back right fourth fifth sixth seventh were all lightning but every single one was totally different uh we see only one zark deck but of course zark is the best card ever printed so of course it won um but yeah there's top eight i'm excited next up is going to be daytona regionals if I remember correctly, I remember um, my uh, TNLG was saying that um, that's next. So we'll see it there. That's expanded. It's still the same format, but um, nothing new has came out just yet. But still, uh, I guess Detective Pikachu has came out technically. And the only thing really from Detective Pikachu we worry about is maybe the Ditto. And we'll see if that makes an appearance in some decks. Being able to copy decks from the energy is pretty cool. Especially when it's like you can play like water energies to copy against other Blastoise decks. Or maybe you play the, you know, you're playing a heavy DCE deck and it could be you're um, against a Zork or something. So I think the Ditto is a really cool tech. Um, yeah, especially in Blastoise, right? The one at Ditto seems pretty pretty cool since you can just copy like Zork decks you're opposing Articuno decks or or I guess whatever you want to copy in water Pokemon but guys there we go top eight decks from this weekend congratulations to top eight from Denver um like I said next up will be Daytona and we'll try once again to uh, get the deck list out ASAP and try to tag all top eight people as we can and uh, I'm excited to see what happens but guys hope you enjoyed this video Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you go vote for Fan Friday. If you're still watching this, go vote for Fan Friday. Let me know that you stayed here. Um, and yeah, hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Uh, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for Expanded Thursday. I'm excited. Uh, if you're here, it's Mel Metal. I'm excited. Alrighty. Bye.